Welcome back to Yu-Gi-Oh! History with Joe Gerlando. In today's video, Lolly and I are going to play the 2014 Nationals format. I've built the deck that is pretty close to the deck I used at the 2014 US Nationals. This is actually the only Nationals that I ever top 64 would and it was with none other than Sylvan. Sylvan's is by far my favorite combo deck of all time. It might actually just be my favorite deck of all time. I really enjoy what Soul Charge can do in a Sylvan deck. Combining it with Lone Fire Blossom, Hermitry, you get to draw a bunch of cards. Alsei is one of my favorite cards of all time because both of its effects, the ability to call the top card of your deck and add it to your hand, and then bounce or wing blast cards to the top of your opponent's deck, it's just absolutely incredible. My deck's pretty typical for the most part. The only thing in my deck that might be a little bit unusual are two main deck copy of Rivalry of Warlords. Pat Hoban topped this Nationals as well with Sylvan's. His version ran Vanity's Emptiness in this slot. I think Rivalry of Warlords is actually better than Vanity's Emptiness because you can actually completely play with very little issue when Rivalry of Warlords is on the board because Alse is a plant and so is Araya. Not only is Araya a plant that actually can bounce your own Rivalry of Warlords, which comes up every now and then, as a result, unlike Vanity's Emptiness, where you might actually be stymied by it on the board, that's not the case. You can actually completely play with Rivalry of Warlord, then it's basically going to stop a lot of the same interactions. You know, for example, if your opponent has a hand on the field or a trap tricks and they flip Sanctum, you could have flipped Emptiness and stopped the Moral Tech from hitting the board. You also could just flip Rivalry and stop the Moral Tech from hitting the board. And then Rivalry has some application against matchups that Vanity Emptiness does not. Obviously, it's not as good in the mirror match. Your opponent can also play under Rivalry of Warlords fairly well. And it can be a little bit awkward when you want to go into things like Spark Dragon and Felgrand because the Warrior and Dragon types are obviously not all that common in your deck. You don't have a ton for each of those. So yeah, it can get a little bit awkward. But if you're willing to play with Alsei and Araya, the Rivalry of Warlord package I think is really good. And then it's not as, you know, fragile as Emptiness. One of the issues I've always had with Emptiness is, all right, so they kill a card and then it pops your Emptiness and you feel like you just lose the game from there. With Rivalry of Warlords, it's not as fragile. I feel like that's a huge upside with Rivalry over Emptiness. But nevertheless, this is the deck that I ran at Nationals. It has a pretty cool side deck package. I don't know what Lolly's going to run, but for the Sylvan matchup, the Lightsworn matchup, and other combo decks, like even Infernities to a lesser extent, I cited Double Trade-In, Double Christia. This might seem awkward, but with Double Trade-In, you actually have five targets because of the main deck Hermitries. And then with Triple Soul Charge, you can very easily drop Christia. And if you don't draw the Trade-In to put the Christia into the graveyard, you can just Soul Charge for two monsters and just Tribute Summon for Christia, which sometimes is even better because sometimes you can Soul Charge for five, make all your plays, go into Felgrand, do with some of those awesome plays with Lone Fire Blossom, and at the end of it all, Tribute Summon for a Christia. So I really like that trade in Christia package. And then the Light and Prisoning Mirror is also for that matchup, and then basically some back row hate and some hate for hat, some DD Crows for the mirror match. Anyway, I'll be jumping into Lolly, who should be hosting, into one of his matches. Yep, no, nope, that's not him. Here we are. And I am, in fact, running Sylvan's. Perfect. Knowing Alex, I could see him running something like Gears or Hat. I feel like he likes those grindy decks, but anything is possible. If we're playing Nationals 2014, we're also going to be able to draw six cards. This is just about the last time in Yu-Gi-Oh's history where we'll be able to draw the full six this would change later on that summer, so that is exciting. I will get to draw a sixth card, which I kind of need here with this hand. I guess with the Curry Bandit, it's not too bad. So this is a pretty scripted opening play. I have to play Upstart Goblin. I can't mount for anything. I don't have any plants. So we'll play the Upstart Goblin. Okay. Yeah, now we'll just summon the Curry Bandit. The question here is if I played the Mount Sylvania, is there any benefit to doing so? The benefit to doing so is during the end phase of my opponent's turn, it basically lets me look at the top card of my deck. If it's a plant, it has to go to the graveyard. And if it's something else, it can go into the top or bottom of my deck. So if it's a card like, let's say, another Mount Sylvania, a card that's relatively dead, I could just send it to the graveyard. You know, there is some benefit to that. I think, though, it's pretty reasonable to assume that I'm going to hit some plants off of the Curry Bandit, so I'm not sure to the extent that I need to risk the Mount Sylvania. Mount Sylvania is a pretty powerful card itself. I will say, because I'm almost assuredly not going to, there's basically no way I'll have a monster in attack mode. I don't have to worry about my opponent crashing a hand, but it could be possible that my opponent's running Mermills with infantry, and I don't necessarily want to just put Mount Sylvania on the board and let my opponent kill that for free, so 
We're going to summon the Curry Bandit. Try to go to the end phase. Try to send it to the graveyard. I wonder if there's a way that this lets me excavate five. No, okay. So now we mill five, two, three, four, and five. And I think I'll just get the soul charge. Yeah, I have I have soul charge with double fertilizer. I feel like something pretty good there can happen. The Sylvania is dead. The rivalry is not exactly the greatest card in the world right here. So I'll just take that and pass. I did hit one fire. So that is something to consider with Blaster. Blaster might seem a little bit out of place. It is the only dragon ruler in the deck. All right, so this confirms my opponent's running. Okay, he is in fact running Hat. But this is the only dragon ruler in the deck. You could theoretically run another one like Tempest, the wind one, because of the sages. But for the most part, fire is the most common attribute. You have the double lone fire, which fuels itself. And then you have the hermitries and the Komashrumos. So that's why we have Blaster. So he's going to get Artifact Ignition. All right, that's useful to see. It'll make it so that the fertilizers are unlikely to resolve. This maxi is a little bit dead in this matchup, but it's not the absolute worst thing in the world. His deck does special summon. Artifact Sanctum special summons, and then the hands can special summon. All right, let's see here. I might try to activate the Mount Sylvania. The reason for that is a lot of players, I don't know what he will do. Generally speaking, if your opponent plays Mount Sylvania, you should shotgun MST or Ignition against the Mount Sylvania. A lot of players, when they read Mount Sylvania, see that the cost is to send a plant from their hand or face up on the board, and they think, okay, I'll wait for my opponent to get rid of the plant. But you can actually see the makeup of my hand. I would rather this Sage Sequoia be in the graveyard than in my hand. So I'm really curious what he's going to do. Now, he doesn't know I have double fertilizer, so if he knew that, he might hold the ignition anyway. But I'm going to play Mount Sylvania and see if he shotguns the ignition. If he doesn't, I'm going to ditch the Sage. And I'll probably put her um, Koma Shroom on top of my deck so that the Miracle Fertilizer on the Sage gets some card advantage. Activation is good. So now what's probably going to happen here is I'm going to activate this effect, and he's probably going to chain the ignition on this. Okay, that is also good. Yeah, so he's gonna hold it for the for the sage, which is which is fine. Now I can put any Sylvan card on top of my deck. I say Sylvan card because there are universes where you actually put charity on top of your deck. One when you have Upstart Goblin, and two when you have Alse and you want to call the top card of your deck to basically just draw it for free. Obviously, neither of those are are the case right now. I'm thinking about going into Hermitry. One of the reasons of going into Hermitry is it puts a level eight into the graveyard. It fuels my soul charge and my subsequent miracle fertilizer. It also puts another dark into the circulation. One of the things that I might end up trying to do this turn is to array my miracle fertilizers. So we'll see where that goes. I could also go Koma Shrumo. It's also a fire monster, so it would also accomplish that. And it could chip away. The fact that he has four back rows is obviously you know, fairly threatening right now. So I'm curious what card here is the best one. It's either her to me, it's either Hermitry, Koma Shruma, and then I guess there is also a discussion for Princess Sprout, but I would really love to go into Princess Sprout when I feel more confident that that play is going to work, because with Princess Sprout, what you typically want to do is use its effect, which essentially just sends the card from the top of your deck to the graveyard to stack it on top, and then Hermitry, Princess Sprout, using Hermitry's effect, you know it's a plant because you put it there. It allows you to special summon Sprout back as a level 8 and draw a card off tree. And then go into a rank 8, which is incredibly powerful. So generally speaking, I want to save the Princess Sprout sort of at the last stage of this play. Hoping to you know, regenerate some card advantage by getting the draw. And then also go into some of the most powerful monsters in the deck, like I'll say. So there is a discussion to put Sprout on top. Because when I Miracle Fertilizer off of the Sage in the graveyard and put a level 7 on the board... There is something going on there, but I think my opponent's almost assuredly going to respond to that. I think Koma Shrumo is the card that makes the most sense, because what I think it's going to do is I think I'll be able to get one of these activations off. It also fuels a fire monster, and then at the end I can soul charge and hopefully chip away at something. So I'm going to activate this Miracle Fertilizer. He should wait for me to like say that I'm using it, and then activate. I think I'm just going to, like, he knows I know that he knows that I know what he should do here, so... 
the reason I'm waiting to activate, well, I'm surprised that went through. The reason I was waiting there is he wants me to activate it so that I lose my normal summon. But I put it on the board, declare Sage's effect. Wow, okay. I'm really surprised this is going through. And I'll destroy this one. It's kind of shocking to me that all of that went through. Well, hmm. This deck can't, you know, outright OTK me, so I'm not too afraid of that. I have the opportunity here to con to Miracle Fertilizer the Lone Fire Blossom. I activate the Lone Fire Blossom's effect, but then I lose this Fertilizer. I don't necessarily want that to happen. I know he still has the ignition. Granted, he can just ignition this fertilizer, but that interaction actually was pretty okay with me. I, th I think I don't want to run into something like torrential, so I think I'm fine just trying to chip away here for 26. He might activate Sanctum, and I can one for one off the maxi, but I feel like he would have used that a little bit earlier. Interesting. All right, so. Yep. Okay. Oh, he's going to destroy that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so he's destroying his own moral tech so that he can set an artifact. Yeah, another moral tech. Okay. And then that moral tech will activate, and I'll chain Maxi. His deck doesn't really special summon a lot, so being able to just use my Maxi here, even for a one-for-one, -one, is actually pretty good for me, so I'll draw another Sage. Huh. That was actually a really good hit. So, because a Sylvan... Does it include... Yeah, okay. Yeah, because a Sylvan went to the graveyard, I'm going to special summon this for my hand. That was actually just an incredible draw, because what this is going to do is be able to attack over the Moral Tech, and if this back row here can't stop this, I can Fertilizer my other Sage back, and there's actually a universe where I can... Go into Araya and bounce all my fertilizers. Yeah, that was good. That was good. So we know this is Moral Tech. We don't know what this is. Let's see. I haven't looked at a hat deck list in a long time. Could be another Call the Haunted and what I it could be just be Solemn Judgment, actually. He set a lot of back rows. Heavy Storm is not legal, so. From the Sage going to the graveyard. Oh, yep, yep, fertilizer is gone. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. That's right, I have another fertilizer. So the reason the fertilizer went to the graveyard is if the special summon monster leaves the board, that dies. I'm going to declare this effect, though, main phase two. You can use each of your big trees as many times as you want per turn. All right, Rose Archer, that's too bad. It's not a plant. That would be a good card to have in my hand, though. I think we're going to keep pushing and play this because I think if he had enough responses to stop this, he would have last turn. And I'm going to bring out the Sage because what this is going to do is it's going to threaten an Exceed monster. And when that happens, the Miracle Fertilizer actually stays on the board. So we're going to declare this Sage's effect. I presume if the first one was good, this one is also good. Oh, nice. I don't think I have anything in the graveyard. Though. Oh, I do have Monsylvania. I can add that to my hand. That's cool. Now what we'll do is we'll overlay. I'm going to go into Araya in defense mode. The reason I'm going to do that in defense mode is you don't want your opponent to attack a hand into it. And I know I don't know that there is a plant on top of my deck, but there's a possibility and I could get the fertilizer back to my hand and then activate it again this turn. Which is only marginally useful, quite frankly, but still something to consider. I guess I should have been putting some of these in defense mode off the special summons, the second one specifically. I guess it doesn't matter. I'd want an attack mode anyway. I'm going to put this here in defense mode. All right. I don't have a plant to ditch or else I could stack the top of my deck, but I'm just going to activate the effect. I'll say three. And I will look at the top three. Nope. Yep. Yep. Oh, that was actually pretty good. So this goes to the bottom of the deck. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do tree 
No, we're gonna do Sprout one. So I have to resolve Araya first. So I get to bounce two cards. I'm gonna bounce the Miracle Fertilizer, and I'll probably just bounce this one because I know this is Moral Tech, and you can just set it. It doesn't like actually do anything. It doesn't target either. So this is gonna resolve, and you can't respond to it. It doesn't target. And then Tree is gonna go. It doesn't actually matter. It's not like warning is going to stop anything, but I still will do it properly. I can chain block here. No, actually what I want to do, I don't want to chain block. I want tree to be one, sprout two. That way the sprout special summon spore first. Then the tree will resolve, which will let me look at the top three cards of my deck. I wonder how I can do that. Oh, okay, banish face down, banish face down, banish face down, yeah. So I could chain block if I absolutely had to, but I, I obviously don't need to do that right now. All right, so what I can do here is I have this blaster now, and I have at least one fire that I don't really mind banishing with the Koma Shrumo. I have the Hermitry as well, but... I have the Miracle Fertilizer. Yeah, what I think I'm gonna do here is I think I'm going to, I have a really awesome play. I'm going to banish the Coma Shrumo and the Lone Fire Block, no, in the Hermitry to go into Blaster, and I'm going to go Blaster and Spore into a level 8 monster. I'm going to Miracle Fertilizer the Hermitry, get to use that effect, and then what I'm going to do is banish the Sage for the Spore and go into Alse and bounce this to the top of his deck. So I can stack these cards however I want. So the way I want these to be stacked is I want to put the Hermitry on top. And the reason I want to put the Hermitry on top, yeah, I want to put top of my deck on top of my deck on top of my deck. The reason I want the Hermitry on top is I'm going to get to activate this Miracle Fertilizer on the Hermitry in just a second and draw that. I guess I might as well do it now. I'll put this here. I'll put it in defense to play around the hands. I'll activate to draw, and now I get to banish the top three cards again. And one more. Okay. Oh, another Miracle Fertilizer. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I don't have any plants, which are a little annoying, but that's... I guess beggars can't be choosers there. Okay. So I'm going to banish the Komashrumo in this... Now, I can banish this Hermitry now that I have... That I have just milled it off of that last effect and leave the Lone Fire in the graveyard to go with the Mount Sylvania. There is a discussion at this point where the, maybe the Lone Fire Blossom doesn't really matter because I basically have access to all of the big trees in the graveyard anyway. And maybe able to make these Miracle Fertilizers better. I want more higher monsters in the graveyard. All right, let's just regroup and consider what we're doing. We're resolving the Hermitry right now. What are we going to do next this turn? Next, we're going to summon the Blaster and go in here and go into start a Spark Dragon, which I think is the best option. Then I'm going to go into Alsei and put this on top of his deck. The thing with Alse is with Alse, you want, generally speaking, to both call the top card of your deck and get it for free, but then also mill. So, in order to actually accomplish that, I want to call Miracle Fertilizer to add it to my hand for free, but then I need another effect to mill a card in order for that to work the way I want. Okay, I think I have the way of doing it. So we're going to put this on top of the deck because it doesn't really affect anything. That goes on top of the deck there. Now we're going to banish this and this. Special blaster. The blaster goes to the grave. The spore goes to the grave. We go into start a spark dragon there. We banish the sage. We summon the spore here. We overlay these two into Alse here. Oh. That didn't mean to happen. Now we're going to go miracle fertilizer off the top of my deck. Yeah, miracle fertilizer. Add this to my hand. 
Play Miracle Fertilizer. I'm going to put this on here to indicate that I already used its effect. Now the second one is going to special summon this out. And then I'm going to special summon out another Lone Fire Blossom. That's going to go to the graveyard. And now I'm going to special summon out... Actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this on bottom of my deck. No, no, no. I'm going to send this to the graveyard. Special summon out the Princess Sprout. Now what I'm going to do here is activate the Sylvania, the, the Charity. Draw three. Right, I didn't draw any plants. That's too bad. Uh, da, 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 da. To the grave. To the grave. Put this top of my deck. No, no, no. We want the Upstart Goblin on top. We want the Upstart Goblin next. Mill. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to detach off the Alsa to send this to the top of my opponent's deck. And I don't want to put the Sprout on top. Yes, he's asking, yes. Now we're going to play Upstart because I know the top card of my deck is Upstart. Now we'll play Upstart again. And now we get Rose Archer. All right, now we'll end the turn. Yeah, so that worked out pretty well. We have at least one Fertilizer floating. Yeah, duality is fine. I'm not sure if that play with the Sprout was exactly what I needed to do. I guess it's a little bit debatable. I would have to go back and think about it. I lost track of how many level 8s. I thought I'd have another level 8 on the board. I thought I was going to be able to go into Felgrand at the end of that, and then I realized I wasn't able to. Obviously, I was in such a good position there. But yeah, Al the, the key with Alce is you really want to get the free card and spin it because you can use Alce's effect itself. Yeah, true. It was. You had Alce, and the thing with Alce is you can get the second effect off of other Sylvan monsters. So what I wanted to do was get the free Miracle Fertilizer and then use a Sylvan effect. The reason I had to go into Princess Sprout was it was it's the only one that guarantees that you send one from the top of your deck to the graveyard. Sprout will send the top card regardless of what it is. So if you look at Sprout, you contribute, send the top card regardless. All of the other ones, Hermitry, etc., require you to actually hit a plant. So if you don't hit a plant, you can't spin the card. So I went into Alsei, got the free Miracle Fertilizer, and then did it that way. That's what ended up happening. There was maybe a universe where I could have put Fertilizer second from the top, sent the top card of the deck to the graveyard that was the most dead, like Upstart or wherever it happened to have been. I don't recall exactly what the cards were. And then just used Alsei's effect there and then ended with a pretty similar board drawing into Miracle Fertilizer. That may have actually been a little bit better. For some reason, I thought I was going to have another level 8 at the end of that, but obviously I didn't. In terms of side decking, obviously we don't want... Where are they at? Maxi's in the deck. We don't really want the rivalries, although I talked about beforehand how they're actually just at least decent. Marshall Leaf is actually a little questionable. I like having at least the one copy to search off the Mount Sylvania, but other than that, I don't think this card is all that overwhelming in this matchup. Two, four, seven total. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So we can shave two more cards. You can probably shave a big tree and a hermit tree. Something that resembles this. I like the Curry Bandits going second because if it hits any of the Hermitries, Comish Rumos, Martial Leaps even, you can generate some card advantage. The Chalices are there for the Moral Techs. The Decrees are obviously pretty good. I mean, maybe the uh, Mystical Space Typhoons are a little bit overkill, having three of them there. I mean, maybe I'll cut one of these back. And I'll put a Sage back in the deck. I guess... Hermitry. Take one Sage out. But Sage is really good against Moral Tech, as we saw in that last game. It actually has a reasonable effect. Maybe that switch like this makes more sense. Yeah, we'll see what this looks like. So going second is obviously difficult in any format where you draw six. I mean, I had the advantage of drawing six last game, so he gets obviously the advantage here. But my hand is what you would expect. A couple side deck cards. We get a fresh card with the upstart. Sage alone isn't the greatest thing in the world. 
It looks pretty good here in the sense that it doesn't look like he has any of the good Trap Tricks cards. He would have played them, so it's exciting to see that. I think that was a big part of the last game. Okay. Lone Fire would be a good draw. Curry Bandit is actually a pretty good draw, too. Because I have the Chalice for the Moral Tech, so there's actually a universe where this might work. We'll see if that is a universe that we live in. Okay, set. Actually, let's not set that. I don't want to play into Ignition if I don't need to. Yeah, we'll go to the end phase. He might Moral Tech here during the end phase. No. All right, now we just want to hit as many Koma Shroomos as possible. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that was nuts. So we'll add this to hand, add this to hand, because I hit the Marshall Leaf. And then before the end phase is out, we'll activate this Typhoon. We can't read any of the back rows, but we'll activate it on that one. That's too bad. Yeah. Yep. He can just draw up to two cards he controls. Wow. Do you target if this card is draw up to two? If this card is special summoned during your opponent's turn, just draw up to two set cards you control. I guess it... I don't know how much it matters. I don't know if I can play around Durandal. I, I forget what that card does. Can I read Durandal? I'm going to ask him to show me it. I haven't seen this card in a little bit. It has a second effect where it has something to do with hands. I want to make sure that hand effect isn't... He doesn't have it. Oh, okay. He doesn't have one. All right, fair. Fair. All right. I mean, he can go into a level five or a fifth, a rank five, whatever they're called. All right. Effect is fine. I, I'm going to hold this chalice. I think it's responsible to hold it because it's going to be really shocking if he can deal 8,000 damage to me next turn. And I have Fertilizer, Fertilizer, Charity, Soul Charts, and a chalice to stop a special summon of a Moral Tech. I think I'm in pretty reasonable shape here. It's 35. I can't imagine any universe where he deals enough damage to kill me from that point. Okay. This isn't even a good one right now, right? No. Okay. He's just going to go aggressive. So 2100, 1400, 1700. Hopefully he doesn't set any more back rows. Okay, let's see what rank 5 he has that is considered pretty good here. And let's see if my play of not chalicing the Beagle Tech worked out. Oh, Pleiades. This one's a good card. This is actually a legitimately good card. And he sets one more back row. Okay. Probably doesn't have a hand in his hand. He maybe has double Diona. Okay, we'll draw. Rose Archer. That was another great draw. All right, let's take a look here what our options are. I can... I think I might want to start with the fertilizer. I'm only at 28. I guess I should consider that. It's a once per turn effect too. I might even be able to bait that out and hold the chalice. So we start with Miracle Fertilizer on a Sage. One of the reasons I don't want to start with Soul Charge is if he warnings it, that's a, quite a bit annoying. I could start with Sylvan Charity. I don't want to really start with Sylvan Charity, though. The main reason I don't want to start with Sylvan Charity is I'd like to Soul Charge the Lone Fire and use the Lone Fire with the Charity to stack the Sage or something like that to ensure that I get a draw. That might just be a little greedy, like attached to the value. I don't know if I need to be so attached to value right now. He does have the Pleiades, but I have the, the Forbidden Chalice for that, so I'm not too worried about that. But I Soul Charge for these two, and then I Lone Fire out Hermitry, and then I Charity the Sage. 
And then I'll have double fertilizer with the sages, which can bounce the fertilizers to my hand. Yeah, I think I'm convincing myself that if he has the soul, that, that, that if he has the warning that it's not the absolute end of the world. So I'm going to do it for Lone Fire and Sage. Oh, it's good. Okay. So we're going to get a couple guys out. So I'm going to Lone Fire into Lone Fire because Lone Fires from this point forward are probably not that useful because I'm probably going to ride Miracle Fertilizer for the rest of the game, so that is another reason. It also fuels future blasters. I also, when I use the Sage, depending on the circumstances, I'd rather hit a real plant like a Coma Shrumo than I would rather hit something else. So that's another thing to consider right now. So I think what I'll do is I will use this Lone Fire Blossom. I can get another Lone Fire Blossom. Oh, he's thinking. I wonder if he's going to try to Pallades the Sage. I don't think he's going to, but it's something to consider. When a monster that was special summoned, this turn activate its effect on your opponent's field. Negate that effect. Uh, I think this is probably fine. So now what I'll do here is I'm going to Charity and put the Sage on top. That way I can fertilize her into the Sage and I'm actually in pretty good shape. So I'm going to activate this. I'm going to hold the Rose Arch. And my question, like he activated a trap, why would you not do anything? Spore, not bad. Yeah, this is good, because now I can get the Spore into the graveyard from this. So we're going to reveal this and special this. We'll put this on top of the deck, this on top of the deck. And now we will declare Sage's effect. Mills the Sage, adds the Charity to hand. Now we'll go Fertilizer on the Sage. He uses Bottomless. Do I care about that? I mean, I probably care about that, right? But do I really care about that? That's the question. I feel like I should just Rose Archer this because then I can Chalice the Pallades and I'm going to be in pretty good shape because I can go into Aurea and I know the top card of my deck is minimum Spore and then I can bounce the Fertilizer, play Fertilizer, get back Lonefire, go into Hermitry, have the Sage in the Graveyard that would be there from the Aurea and in doing so I'd be able to I'll say this thing back to the top of his deck and then if I hit I'll say one of them top, hopefully this one to the top of his deck. And if there's another plant, I'll be in really, yeah, I'm just going to negate this. So I'm not going to use the second Sage's effect, which might seem, oh, now he's going to use his Pallades. It's a once per turn. It is a quick effect, but it is once per turn. I kind of just have all the counters right now to what he's got going on. Yeah. Now we're going to go into Aurea. Now we're going to go three. So if I get one... Oh yeah, I'm at 800. Yeah, yes, yes, you're right. If I hit one more plant after the spore, it's crazy because I can bounce the fertilizer and his Pallades. Ugh, that's too bad. That's too bad. I had a lot of plants to hit too. Just one more plant would have been nuts. I still think I probably bounced the fertilizer here. I, mean, I don't have to bounce the fertilizer, but it's probably better to bounce the fertilizer. No, I can just bounce the Pallades, I think, actually. If I bounce the Pallades, I can use this fertilizer to go into Hermitry and go into the Alsei. And the Alsei can bounce the Diana, and I think his hand is dead. Yeah, so I'm going to bounce the Pallades. It's not the best value, but again. It is what it is. Here, do I want to draw Hermitry? Is there anything that I could upstart in that would change the outcome of what I want to do from here? I don't think there is. Hmm. 
No, I can't use another soul charge. If I draw the third fertilizer, it doesn't actually accomplish anything. Yeah, so I'm going to activate this. Special out this. Send this to the grave. Oh, he might actually have an effect here. He's going to DD Crow here. All right. So that's what's in his hand. Okay. That's fine. Yep, on activation of fertilizer. That's fine. We'll activate this upstart. Uh, I'm going to lose to Gaga Ga Cowboy. That's too bad. Yeah. Yeah, he's just going to summon a level 4 and kill me with Gaga Ga Cowboy at the end of all this. Unless that's another DD Crow in his hand. That's too bad. Okay. All right, maybe we're not completely dead. There has to be, maybe there's some one of these that burns that I'm just not thinking of. I guess soul charge is a reasonable card that was in his hand. His deck doesn't usually run a lot of soul charges, but he may have had a single soul charge and he's gonna what, bounce my thing again. Yeah, because I put it back to his extra deck. That's actually not that bad. I mean, I have double fertilizer. Volcasaurus. Oh, and if you do inflict damage. You know, original attack. This monster cannot attack your opponent directly. Okay. Yep, Volcasaurus was out. All right, so we'll be going first here in game three. Let's see how we open. Hmm. Could be better. Could be worse, but could be better. This is one of those hands where I think I have to charity and hopefully draw into Lone Fire Blossom. Definitely not that. Huh. All right. Let's see what we can do here. So, I can reveal Sylvan Charity and Typhoon. I can use Mount Sylvania. All right. So, let's think about this. I can play Mount, send Spore. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll reveal Sylvan Charity as the Sylvan. I could also just use Marshall Leaf for just Spore and save Sylvania, but I don't think that's correct. Because then I'm just soul charging for one. Yeah. So we'll send this to the grave the top of my deck, to the top of my deck, activate Sylvania, send Spore to the grave, put Sage Sequoia at the top of my deck, summon Marshall Leaf, declare for two, Gonna mill the sage, which is gonna give me back the wow, mills both of them. Okay, must be nice. Well, that changes things a bit. Now we'll soul charge for three. Okay, that was pretty good. We'll activate this sage effect. Okay, I guess I'll get that effect too. I'll get Princess Sprout. All right, so there's some kind of cute plays that I can make, but I think there's a play that I can make that my opponent just simply can't beat. So I'm going to go into Spark Dragon here in defense mode. I'm going to send this to the grave, mill the top card of my deck, Put this on top of my deck. Use the Sage, mill it. Special summon it out as a level three. Overlay these two. Go into the mech. And then set decree. I can't see my opponent beating this. This is not nearly as flashy as I could have done. 
There were plays where I go into Alce. There were plays where I went into Araya, even Draco Sack. Like there's a universe where I can Draco Sack make tokens, banish the Prince Red Sprout to make it a level two with a spore. But this keeps the spore in my grave. I just can't see how my opponent beats this board. Like if he tries to attack a hand into the Anganir, I just shift it to defense mode. And if he activates Ignition or MST, okay. I just use this decree. Like, I just can't see how my opponent gets out of this. Because end phase, I'm going to flip the decree. And then my Spark Dragon is going to protect it. Like, he needs an incredibly specific series of cards to get out of this. So the reason everything's in defense mode is to play around all of the hands. That was what I was pondering. How do I play around all of the hands? Well, this board... He can't break it with hands, and he can't get around this decree. And I have the Miracle Fertilizer next turn. Turn back to the next Sage, which can start to bounce things. And I have the Decree Stardust Spark Dragon. That I think is just going to be incredibly difficult to break. Seeing what he has here, Needle Sealing, Maxi, and Dark, or Deep Dark Trap Hole. Yeah, Trap Hole was an annoying card. When you Soul Charge for a bunch, they could activate this. Which is obviously good in this matchup with all my big monsters. Curious what he's going to pick. I don't think he'll pick Maxi. We're kind of past the point where Maxi is really good. Needle sailing. All right, he'll probably summon a hand or something like a trap tricks monster or set it. He would set the hand, but summon a trap tricks. Oh, nope, he's changing his mind. But summon a trap tricks monster and then try to. Oh, he is picking the needle sailing still, right? Okay, so he's eliminated that card and he's thinking about these two. Hmm. I don't really mind him getting Maxi. I can just kind of one for one with Maxi by activating the fertilizer next turn. And maybe I'll go for two. Assuming he really can't kill this decree, I'd rather him just have a needle sailing. Obviously, it's just theoretically dead. He could have double ignition, which would be really annoying. That's kind of how I lost at Nationals this year in the top 64 against Hat. I had a pretty reasonable opening with Felgrand Decree, but my opponent had like ignition breakthrough skill and just had the perfect cards to out it. So then I lost pretty soon after in game three. Let's see here. All right, he picks Max C. That's one card that doesn't clearly break the board. There were universes where if he had enough ignitions, he could actually break the board. Oh, man. This dark hole? You gotta be kidding me. Well. Target itself. I guess I'll target Spark Dragon with himself. Yeah, sure. Send Sage to the grave. Now I lose to Ignition, but he's going to have to shotgun the Ignition. He might, but he didn't get Needle Sailing, so I think it's less likely that he has the ability to pop the board from that point. So that'll be interesting. Okay, so that's a monster. It's almost assuredly a hand. So now we'll declare Mount Sylvania. We'll put this to the bottom of the deck because we don't want it. I'm going to activate Decree End Phase so that he can't chain anything. Enter into my turn. Please go away. I'll activate Fertilizer on the Sage Sequoia. Yeah, and I'll just find playing advantage because this is probably a hand and I want to leave everything in defense mode. So I'll activate Fertilizer, declare the effect, and target the Sage.
Now I will declare the Sage's effect. Hit the Rose Archer, okay. Now I'm just going to set Chalice, and I'm going to try and generate the card advantage through what I have. I'm going to have to put this into attack mode, presumably. Yeah, that's the only way to keep this thing alive. I mean, I could Spark Dragon it, but I don't really want to do that. So I'll put this into attack mode. That way I can just use its effect on itself again. I don't want to attack this because he can just kill stuff with his hands. At least this way this shifts itself to defense mode, which is one of the main reasons why you included this as your only rank 3. He's getting the extra deck. He must have drawn another level 4 monster. Hmm, that's interesting. Exiton Knight was legal, though I do have... Chalice, Spark Dragon, and Engineer. I have three ways of, relatively speaking, dealing with that. If I can survive into the next turn, well, I'm going to, I guess I'm at 5,000. It's not a guarantee. But if I get to the next turn with this Fertilizer up, things could really start to pick up when I have the Fertilizer active, when I have Araya. Then you can go into Araya and bounce Fertilizer. It's just so much card advantage. And we're just hoping he's, you know, three traps in a hand. If his board is three traps in a hand, I'm in good shape. If he tries to go into Exiton Knight and I Forbidden Chalice it, we're also in really good shape. Yep. I'm going to say okay to that. Because he's going to search a trap card. I don't really care if he searches a trap card. Like, Sure, he searches a trap card. If he can't kill the Decree behind the Spark Dragon Decree combo, then what's the big deal if he gets the trap card? It's not. I'd actually rather him just have as many Mermelios as he wants right now. They're not going to do anything. It's the other one that I would actually mind. Diana, I think it's called. Diano. All right, so he has a deep trap hole. Okay. He might flip hand trying to go into Exiton Knight or continue this passive game, but he knows I'm threatening the Araya with the Miracle Fertilizer, so he might feel inclined to make a push here. We'll see. Drawing a plant would be nice, uh, specifically a Sylvan card, not just a plant. I guess I would take drawing a plant, because I could ditch it with Sylvania. So even if I draw Lone Fire, there are two reasons why I really want to draw a plant. Sylvania and Mount Sylvania. Sylvan Charity, rather, and Mount Sylvania. Can't really get any reads on the other card in his hand, because he had just had one single maxi, and he won for one it off the Fertilizer. So whatever this other card is with this trap, we don't really have any particular read on. Now, granted, he summoned a Mermilio over summoning something else, but if he had a, another hand, would he set it? I don't think so. I think he would rather just slim his deck down. Because again, I can just shift it to defense mode if he tries to crash a hand. So he can't trigger any of his hand effects by being destroyed by battle with the way my board is currently constituted. So with what he has, he's you know kind of priced into considering going into Exiton Knight. If he goes into Exiton, I think I just, I have to read Exiton Knight. Can you do it twice in the same chain link? I don't remember what Exiton Knight exact text is. If you can, that's a little annoying. Oh, okay, so we had Deanna set. Okay. Okay. I need to read Exiton Knight. I know you can do it in a chain link. I don't know if you can only use its effect once per turn. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, giant hand. Okay. <laughs> I see how it is. During either player's turn, when a monster effect is activated on your opponent's field, you can detach two materials, then target one effect monster your opponent controls while this card is face up on the field. That effect monster also cannot change its battle position. Well, that's kind of funny. And he sets one back row, which is presumably the trap card. Hmm. Should be okay because I have the chalice set. So we'll declare the Sylvania end phase. Mill Typhoon. Yeah, we don't want Typhoon. We'll put it at the bottom of the deck. I could actually put it at the top of the deck. That's one of the options here. See, it says here, otherwise place it at either the top or bottom of the deck. But we don't want to do that. We'll start our turn. Okay. That was good. Thinking in standby. What he might do here is try to MST or ignition this decree. And then when I chain the Spark Dragon, he might chain the Giant Hand, and then I chain back the Forbidden Chalice. Okay. Okay. 
Chain link one, Sanctum. Chain link two, Ignition on Decree. Declare targeting Decree. Chain Chalice on Giant Hand. Okay. You still get this card, target one, destroy that target. And if you do, you do not. Yeah, okay. Oh. Perfect. Yeah, this is perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I think we're just going to be able to deal 8,000 damage now. Assuming that these are just two dead cards. So, we can start with Fertilizer, I imagine. Yeah. Just Fertilizer for a save, see what's on top, go into Aurea. Play Sylvan Charity, put Hermitry on top to guarantee. Play the Fertilizer, bring the Hermitry back attack for 8,000. Yeah, okay, so that's just minimum game from what I have right there. And we'll declare Sage's effect. Keep putting Upstart Goblins. Okay. We overlay these two. Oh, I don't know why I put this into the graveyard. We'll go into Aurea. Start to do things into attack mode. All right, I'm giving him a chance to like Book of Moon here. All right, now I'm going to activate the charity because I know nothing has happened. We'll draw three. One, that Curry Bandit is not good. Blaster is not the worst card ever. So we're going to put the tree because we have to. And then we're going to put the curry bandit because I don't want to have it anymore. So we'll put this on top, this on top. We'll activate this for three. We will mill, mill, and mill. Oh, sick. Okay. So now we'll bounce this to hand and this to hand. Do I kill anything with Koma Shrumo? Uh, that's an interesting question. I mean, probably not. What happens when you kill this? This card is in your possession, is destroyed by an opponent. So you can target one card on the field, destroy it. If this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent, skip their next battle phase. Yeah, no, thank you. I'll just use the tree. Vanish face down, vanish face down, vanish face down. Perfect. So I can get a second decree. That seems pretty sweet. So top of deck, top of deck, top of deck. Play the fertilizer. Declare it on the tree. Declare the tree. Mill the sage. Draw the decree. Add this to my hand. Shift this to attack. This is enough damage as currently constituted to win. I'm just thinking because I have the ability to, to use the spore on the sage, but I don't think I need to do that right now. I'll just try and attack for game with everything. I wonder what card he could have that is going to make him hold out or not. So that's game right there, just those three. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I have this banished to go into Spore 2. Yeah. Yeah, Chalice. He's saying the Chalice. Chalice is really good in this matchup. It, you know, it really almost won me game 2. Anyway. That was a really intense match. This matchup is always really interesting, trying to navigate through with decrees and whatnot. Anyway, that's Jojo Lander for Yu-Gi-Oh! History. Thank you for watching. This is really one of my favorite formats. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this. What Sylvans can do is just such, such an incredible thing. Such a fun deck. A lot of cool interactions. Every time you play, your end board is always a little bit different. The combo is always a little bit different. This game, for example, I never had a Lone Fire Blossom. I had a pretty mediocre six cards and then started milling you know the perfect plants and then ended up with a really awesome opening turn but nevertheless thank you for watching check back soon for more Yu-Gi-Oh content mm -hmm.